So if you've seen these last few videos, we've done a lot of talking about overbite versus overjet. And a lot of people misunderstand the term overbite. But in today's video, we're going to talk about what an overbite really is and some ways your orthodontist might fix it. So let's go. What's up guys, Dr. Greg here back with another episode of Braces Explained. I hope you guys are all doing awesome. This week was a little bit different because usually I film these videos on Wednesday nights and you know, on Wednesdays I work until 7 p.m. So I get home pretty tired and I try to film it on Wednesday nights. If you guys have been here these last couple of weeks, I've been able to consistently post on Saturdays, which is a huge accomplishment for me because that's been my goal on this channel for quite some time, but it's been really, really hard to you know fit it and balance it into my schedule. And if you guys are one of those people that have checked out every single one of these last videos, let me know in the comments of today's video so I can show you guys some love. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already yet and be sure to make that thumbs up button turn blue by clicking on it. Okay, enough with my shameless plugs. But this week I was so beat after work. I had like a ton of new patients, a ton of consults, a ton of people getting their braces off. We were understaffed. It was insane. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to wake up Thursday morning, 5 a.m. We're going to film this thing. That didn't work out either. But don't worry, I was able to find some time before Saturday to film this video and edit it and get it out for you guys. And for those those of you guys that notice, I have my plant here. I actually saw in a recent video of Ali Abdul, and I saw that he had the same plant as I do, and this is in my living room. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna put it in my video as a tribute and shout out to him. So, and if you guys don't know, I'm a huge fan of his channel about productivity and you know how he balances everything in his life because this guy's super crazy busy. And the fact that he's able to balance being a physician with his YouTube channel, I have no excuse not to balance mine. So huge shout out to him. So yeah. I know that's super random, but you know what? I had to include it and I had to shout him out. But that's enough about me. Let's get started on today's video. In these last few weeks, we've been talking a lot about overbite and overjet. And I know a lot of people misunderstand the terms. A lot of people think overbite is how much your upper teeth stick out compared to your lower teeth, but that's not true. As we've talked about in previous videos, that's actually called overjet. When we talk about overbite in orthodontics, we talk about how much your upper and lower teeth overlap each other in the vertical dimension. So if you have a very large overbite, it's not that your upper teeth stick far out forward, it's that your upper teeth overlap your lower teeth so much that you can't even see your lower teeth. This is also called a deep bite. So a big overbite is a deep bite. So you're probably thinking, that's great, deep bite, whatever. How does your orthodontist fix it? Well, there's a bunch of different ways an overbite can be treated. And the main way that this overbite can be treated is based off of what caused the overbite, right? So first we're gonna talk about the causes of these different overbites, and then we could talk about a few ways that your orthodontist might treat this. So a big overbite can be caused by a few things. One is when your upper teeth are over extruded, which means that your upper teeth have over erupted over your lower teeth. And that causes a deep bite because it overlaps your lower teeth. On the flip side, if your lower teeth over erupt and basically go behind the upper teeth too much, that's another cause of a deep bite. In both of these cases, this is what's called a curve of speed. And this curve of speed is basically, if you were to look at the teeth from the side, if the teeth on the lower kind of curve up like this, that's called a curve of speed. So basically your premolars are gonna be lower than your canines, which are lower than your incisors. So you basically see a slanting up and that's called a curve of speed. And a big curve of speed can contribute to this deep bite. And I know a bunch of you guys have been asking, what's a reverse curve of speed wire? Don't worry, we're gonna get to that, but this is a little bit of an intro into what that is. So next, let's talk about why a deep bite or a big overbite is so bad and why your orthodontist re recommend treating this. If you guys haven't checked out the Braces Club yet, I highly encourage every single person that's on this YouTube channel to join it. It's a great community. We have a lot of conversations going on. We're posting super actively on there. So if you haven't joined it yet, I'm gonna put a link in the description of today's video as well as in this corner. And if you guys are part of the Braces Club, let us know in the comments of today's video how awesome that club is so that people that are considering joining join the club. It's an awesome, awesome community. Okay, enough with my shameless plugs. Let's continue on with today's episode. If you have too deep of a bite, a lot of things can happen. One is that can actually impinge on your palate and actually cut up the gums on the tongue side of your upper teeth. I know, that sounds painful, right? And what this can lead to is actually recession of the gums back there, as well as sensitivity, early wear of the teeth, a lot of bad things. Another thing a deep overbite can cause is that it can actually lock that lower jaw back. And what this can do is cause a lot of tension and strain in the TM joints. And this results in a problem called temporal mandibular dysfunction, or TMD, which is a lot of people call TMJ. Other things it could do is lead to early wear, chipping of teeth, a lot of bad things. So this is why your orthodontist is going to recommend correction of an overbite. It's not ideal to have an open bite either. You want your upper and lower teeth to overlap a little bit. And this is because whenever you move your teeth around, it's kind of used to protect your back teeth from having them wear away too early. But having an excessive overbite can lead to all these previously explained problems. 
So now let's go on to what you guys are being curious about. What are some ways your orthodontist can treat this deep overbite? Well, now it kind of goes back to the first point on what's the cause of the overbite. If your upper teeth have over extruded, what you might see is a little bit of a gummy smile. So if it's the problem with the upper teeth kind of overlapping the lower teeth, well then your orthodontist might do something like position the brackets in a different position in order to basically pull those upper incisors upright and make it so that your deep bite isn't as deep. But more often than not, the deep bite is caused by the lower incisors. Remember that curve of speed we were talking about, about the lower teeth kind of slanting up in the front? That's usually the cause of a deep bite. I keep bumping into this thing. It's used for the microphones so that it doesn't reverberate so much, so I keep keeps getting in my way though. So if this curve of speed is causing the deep bite, your orthodontist can do a few things. One thing that they can use is actually putting bite turbos on the tongue side of your upper teeth. If you guys don't know what bite turbos are, we talked about it in a previous video, which I'll link out in this corner. What it does is it prevents the upper and lower back teeth from hitting one another. All you will do is hit on the front teeth or wherever those turbos are. What this will do is it'll serve like a bite plate. And a bite plate and these turbos kind of act in the same way. What a bite plate does, whether it's cemented in or removable, is that it prevents the back teeth from touching. This does two things. One is that it puts a force on your lower incisors to intrude so that they basically level out this curve of speed. And what it also does is it allows the back teeth to erupt more. As the back teeth kind of erupt more and the lower teeth intrude down, what you'll end up getting is leveling of this curve of speed so that when your orthodontist removes that bite plate or those bite turbos, you have a normal overbite. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about in today's video about how your orthodontist might correct that deep bite is by using a wire called a reverse curve of speed wire or an RCOS wire or a bunch of different things, RCOS. These are all different names for a wire that is the same thing. This wire is really, really curved. And what it actually looks like is, you know how a curve of speed kind of slants up like this? Well, the reverse curve of speed wire actually slants down like that. And the purpose of this wire is that it will intrude the lower front teeth and extrude or push up the teeth in the back. So this, in an effect, will basically level out that curve of speed and make your overbite less severe and less deep. And a little bit of a sidebar, with these bite plates that are cemented in, it's very important to keep up good hygiene because a lot of food and plaque can build up under it. So I encourage everyone that has an anterior bite plate and literally everyone that is in braces should have a water pick. I tell every patient of mine that gets braces that they have to invest in a water pick. It is absolutely critical in maintaining hygiene. And I actually still use my water pick today. I have the Sonic Fusion, which is actually an electric toothbrush and a water pick with it built in. I'm gonna link in the description of today's video two of my favorite water pick products. Like I said, I have the Sonic Fusion, which has a little electric toothbrush built into it, but there's also one if you just want a tabletop one without any of those extra bells and whistles. I'm also gonna put that in the description so you can check them out and see which one works best for your needs. But yeah, if you have braces, especially if you have anything that's cemented in, you have to get a water pick if you haven't gotten it already. And that's pretty much all I have for you guys on today's episode of Braces Explained. I wanted to kind of talk about overbites because, you know, we've been talking about how overbites are improperly called overjets and things like that in previous videos. And I was like, you know what? I've never even talked about overbites really in this channel. So I wanted to set aside today a little bit of time to talk about that in some ways that your orthodontist might treat it. Remember, a little bit of an overbite is a good thing and a little bit of an overjet is also a good thing. But if you have excessive overbite or excessive overjet or open bite or a reverse overjet, these are all not ideal. So please remember your orthodontist knows what's best for you. And if you have any questions, you should ask him or her. If you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with more content like this. I hope you guys all stay safe, healthy, and happy out there. And I will catch you guys next time next week on another episode of Braces Explained. But for now, Dr. Greg, out.